Good morning, it is Friday the 3rd of December and I come to speak to you again. The, one of the joys, and yet uh, a joy that has within it a necessary tension, is that of interpreting Scripture. Um, it's very easy to interpret Scripture based purely on how I feel in that particular moment. And one, one must understand that as a human being, I can be up one day and down the other. I can be up and down in the same day. And so my, my feelings and my emotions can have a profound impact on what I believe to be happening or what I believe to be the truth and the interpretation. And so we need to always be cautious about interpreting Scripture because it can be easily uh, misinterpreted, even slightly so, by the, the particular feeling that we have. Even if we're terribly religious and we say, for example, um, Lord, I cast out Satan and any demons from me, and Lord Jesus, may it only be your Holy Spirit who speaks to me. And you, you say that prayer is a kind of a mantra, and then you believe the first word that pops into your brain must therefore be God's word. Well, that is not true. Um, because we ourselves have a brain. Um, there might be the power of Satan at work, and there's definitely the power of God at work, but there's also the power of self. God created us, and he gave us independence and power of our own. We cannot switch off our brains. We cannot ask God to make us some kind of a robot. So interpreting scripture has always been a very interesting exercise, and over the years, the scholars have uh, generated a huge degree of, of, of rules and science that tries to uh, facilitate the interpretation of Scripture. Um, and it's always had that Scripture then being misinterpreted by other folk, folk who come in and believe that they are right and somehow everyone else is wrong, that somehow God has given them a unique and sole mandate to interpret a portion of scripture. And we must be cautious of those people. We must be very cautious of those people. Of course, the consequence is that we tend to be so cautious that we are quite conservative and slow sometimes in, in, in changing and moving in the church. But perhaps as frustrating as that might be, the desire is to remain accurate to God. God certainly says there will come those um, in the latter years, who will purposefully misinterpret Scripture so as to get their own way and to manipulate their people. And, and I, I believe we see that happening around us. It, in a sense, it's always been there, but we see it now, where, where pastors or religious leaders use their power and authority for their own sexual exploitation or their own garnering of great wealth, um, usually with the promise that if you give them all your money, then God will give you even more money. Um, greed, isn't it? Greed. People give their money away because they think they're going to make more money. The pastor wants your money because he's being greedy. So we turn to the book of Jude, which we read today, and I would encourage you to read it. It's, it's just that one chapter. We today read Jude, verse, Jude verses 1 to 16. And here Jude, and we assume it's Jude, who's the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, a son of uh, Mary and Joseph, a brother to James, the other identified brother of, of our Lord Jesus. And he doesn't claim to be an apostle, but he does write um, from the heart, I believe, warning people who read his letter to be cautious of those who come with their own agenda in interpretation of Scripture. So again, as we wait in Advent and we wait for the coming of our Lord and we remember his coming before in anticipation, look forward to his coming again. Let us be cautious in who we follow and who we listen to in the interpretation of scripture. If in doubt, stay out. If in doubt, be very conservative. So find the right teachers to follow. Don't just follow those with the biggest mouth or, or even who have sold the greatest number of books. Um, that's not necessarily any indication of the authenticity of that person. So people, it's a tough one. Be cautious in your relationship with God. Not cautious of God, but cautious of those who would love to tell you what God wants you to do. Be cautious of them.
Folks, have a good weekend and we'll chat again next week. God bless.